Well, good morning, church. So I'm in the world. Hello. This is the corporate response. I'm in the world. Repeat after me, please. I'm in the world. I want to hear it louder. I'm in the world. Because if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Say, I'm in the world. As the world squirms, I'm not a worm. I'm a child of the Father. Yeah. Yeah. All the guys, yeah. All the girls, yeah. Come on now, all the guys, yeah. All the girls, Together, yeah. Ah, for everybody that wants to be formal today, this is the wrong day to come to church. See, the joy of the Lord is somebody else's strength. What? Whose? Are you alive? And act like it. Are you saved? Yes. Then act like it. If you're not saved, you should be. Get with the program. One of the very endearing things of the Lord Jesus is in his time with his disciples and those that were hanging out with him, he took time to get things in order. And everybody was following him because of the stuff he could do. He could do the stuff. And they loved seeing stuff happen. And so they became the groupies. <laughs> Until he asked them to eat of his body and drink of his flesh, flesh. And he lost every bit of his followers. And his own disciples were nervous and jerky and were thinking about leaving too. So much. That's how you get rid of groupies. Ask him, eat of your body and drink of your blood. That's how you take care of it. What he, what Jesus was saying, I'm about to die for your sins, and you must repent for your sins in order for my body to work, which is for you to be free of the curse. And uh, today it's no different. If you want to be free of the works of the enemy, you must prepare to be changed. That's it. So when Jesus began to get them to refocus past all the, you know, stuff that was going on that was so miraculous, he stopped one day and said, guys, let's talk a bit. Let's just talk a bit. I want to help you refocus. So I want to teach you how to pray. You know, you've got to have this communication. I know I'm here now, and I represent uh, the Father, and you see me, you've seen the Father, and that's I'm here, and yes, hello, and nice to meet you. But there's a day coming that I'll be gone. So let me help prepare you for that day so that you can have communication by faith when I'm gone. And it begins like this, and it's in Matthew. You know this as well as I do in Matthew 6. What is it? Our Father. Murph, stand up. Be it noted that we have the right answer. Give him a hand clap for the right answer. <laughs> Say, Our Father. There it is. And right here, he included himself. He didn't say, my father, your father, my father's a monkey. He didn't, you know, whatever. He, he said, our father. So he included himself, who art in heaven. So the, the entire Lord's Prayer has to do with relationship. For years it was taught is how to get something. That's selfish. And would you rather have something or have a relationship with the father? Well, if you have a relationship with the Father, then you're going to have everything. But if you, have to, if you try to have everything 
without the Father, you're going to be your own, your own provider of your own blessings. And have fun being a God to yourself. It's a lot of work. Man, I got so tired of being a God to myself before I was saved. Then after I got saved, it was a long journey to stop being a God to myself. Come on now. Because we're so ingrained in performance, and then we, something, we create something that's good, and then we give God credit for it. When in fact, we did it in our own strength. I like it when things happen, and I didn't do anything to make it happen. You need to prepare yourself for blessings that you don't create. That just overcome you and overtake you. I, I learned this theorem. Say theorem. Well, everything, everything is a theory until it's proven right or wrong. Is that not true? But in Deuteronomy chapter 28, there is an equation. It's an equation. And the equation is simply this. God said that if you'll hear what I said and you'll do what I said, that's, you say, that's the Old Testament. I don't have to listen to that. Okay. Let's go to the New Testament. New Testament says this. Ooh, careful, Henry. You're to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Is that New Testament or Old Testament? Wow, we're going to have a Bible study. Where it is, put it on the screen. Bring it up, New Testament. Is it New Testament? Because I heard voices, and they were confusing voices. Why do you halt between two opinions? Bring it on the screen. Let's go find it and see if it's OT or NT. Now, I'm quoting you OT. So for those of you that won't read the OT, I'm going to force you to believe the OT and the NT. Did you get that? Well, you're a sleepy bunch. Good morning. Did you find it? Put it on the screen. James who? I see James. That's the brother, that's the half-brother of Jesus. How many of you know, I, I, was, I was beginning to do some teaching out of James. We're doing something here at Hope of the Generations Church that I've been involved in. I'm going to get, get into some more this morning. It's called continuing education. Because I found the Christian church really is lacking in knowledge. Past John 3.16. There is so much in the Bible that explains even science that if you read your Bible, then you'd know when the theorists are wrong and the Bible is right. A hypothesis is just in the hypothesis. A theorem is just a theorem until it is proven right or wrong. But what has happened in, in man's journey Man has created and has postulated hypotheses that they have established even in your schools of learning for your children as truth. It is unproven dogma that they postulate as a possibility, but your children are being trained, this is truth. That's a lie they're learning. I'm going to deal with one of those lies today. And if you have youth here in Hope of Generations Church, we're going to take you on a journey because I have something with me. I'm going to go back here in a minute. I have something with me that I printed out from the news. I'm your roving reporter today. That is startling. I'll get to it in a minute. Because this is going to take us on a Bible study and call. Well, if I called it a Bible study, people take time out and snooze. If I call it continuing education, they want to know they're curious. You know, I have learned over the years, the easiest way to teach is to ask a question. Because if you just bring the fact, people zone. But a question being asked activates the cerebral cortex. Because people are curious, and it awakens them to try to find the answer. Otherwise, they sleep through the answer. So if I'm going to give you the answer, I want to awaken you to hear the answer so you don't sleep to the answer. Are you tracking with me? Because you're so used to hearing. Listen, 
the world is filled with people that are burnt out with knowledge, but they don't have the right kind. So I want to deal with some of these things. Uh, and in doing so, I may step on some sacred cows today. What is a sacred cow? A belief system that is superstition. Now, what do you do with a sacred cow? Either a punchline. She said you have a barbecue. You either feed it or I have a barbecue. And God loves the barbecue because when they did the sacrifices, the sweet-smelling savor of the barbecue would go up and he would smell it. So God loves the barbecue. Say, chicken or pork? <laughs> well, it depends which side of the covenant you're on. <laughs> Come on now. Going to deal with another sacred cow. Come on now. Have some fun with me. James, half-brother of Jesus. Contrary to Catholic dogma, if you're Catholic here, I'm so sorry to have to tell you the truth. But contrary to Catholic dogma that Joseph and Mary never had it, any more children. Well, they didn't have any child before either. Because it, the Bible says it was supposed that Jesus was the son of Joseph the carpenter. It was supposed because he was brought up. But Joseph the carpenter is not the father of Jesus. This is Father's Day. This, you know, we just get into this real quick. Joseph the carpenter is not the father of Jesus. He's a stepfather. Or is he? No, I'll tell you who he is. He's Mary's husband. Is that more accurate? It, Mary's husband. Now, you may not rela realize this, but this man, this man, Joseph the carpenter, when you look at the royal lineage in, in Matthew and how it was cursed in the days of Kaniah and Jeconiah, and there were no more kings after the dispersion in Babylon, but so-and-so begat so-and-so. So Kaniah or Jeconiah had a son named Southiel, and Southiel begat, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. If God had not cursed that, that kingly line in the days of Kaniah or Jeconiah, guess who would have been king of Israel at the time Jesus was born? Joseph the carpenter. Because he's in the genealogy from David. That's significant, folks. But God had said, no natural man shall ever sit on the throne of David ever again. That's in your Bible. So if no natural man can sit on the throne of David ever again, then how can we have a king? He had to come from heaven. And this was a son of God, the living word who became flesh, be and birthed by the Holy Spirit, conceived by the Holy Ghost, in the womb of Mary. And we, up, here we have Jesus. Well, that's Jesus if you're Greek and English. If you're Hebrew, it's what? No, I'm not, I said if it's in Hebrew, what is it? Yeshua. If you're translating Hebrew into English in the Hebrew, then what is Yeshua in, from Hebrew into English? Not Greek in English, that's Jesus. But from Hebrew into English, what is the Joshua, Yehoshua, or Joshua? The word Joshua is, is uh, the very same thing as what? Is who? Yeshua. Now that throws people for a real loop when I say these things. Because you're so busy trying to pretend you're Greek. And you're stuck being English. But if you were Hebrew and you wanted to say it correct and you had to learn it, you would say Joshua. Now why don't we run around calling Jesus Joshua? Now I'm throwing you a curveball on purpose. I'm not trying to teach you nothing. Is that a double negative? Whew. That was a national merit finalist in American English and math. You'd never know it now. That's not my subject. Doers of the word. If you're a doer of the word, you couldn't stop blessings if you tried. If you try to use the word as a mantra, what's a mantra? Repetition. I heard somebody years ago in one of these misguided whoever's Christian ministers say, now, if you repeat this verse three times a day, I guarantee you will be healed. 
Well, that's too easy. Let's get the whole world healed just by repeating these three verses three times a day. We have the solution. But nobody was being healed repeating the verses three times a day. So it's not the repetition, it's the doing of what that word represents. Not the confession. It isn't the confession, it's the belief that makes you a doer. This is not the corporate assembly of corporate confession. It's a personal journey, is it not? That's not my subject. Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass, if you will be a doer of the word, all these blessings, say all. How much is all? What percentage of something is all? Is there anything greater than all? Yes, there is. It's supernatural. What was greater than all was the five loaves, was the how many fishes and loaves? How many fishes? Two fishies and five loaves. So those two fishies and five loaves became more than two fishies and five loaves because at that moment that was all they had. So there's something greater than all. Are you interested in something greater than all? Something that's greater than all in the world of blessings is God preventing things from happening to you that you won't need prayer for later. Would you be interested in not needing prayer about anything? That's greater than all because everybody's got something all they need prayer for. In the all, there's something they need prayer for. That's not my subject either. If you will hear what God said and you'll be a doer from your heart, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. All these blessings shall come. See, I, I want to talk about something else, but the Spirit of God won't let me go over here. So we're going to divide my continuing education into part A and part B. Because I've got to finish what's burning inside me right now. Can I hang on to that? Isaiah 58. Because I've got thoughts coming. What are you going to do when you have thoughts come? Well, you can dismiss them. You can go back and give your canned speech of what you thought you wanted to say. Or you might consider it's the Holy Spirit wanting to speak through a vessel that may be listening. I may be developing right now something you need to develop, which is peripheral hearing beyond your consciousness. That would be, do you really understand the inspiration of the voice of the Holy Spirit that would give you promptings? If you're going to be led by the Spirit of God, then how does the Spirit of God lead you? Do you think if the Spirit of God is going to lead you that there's something happening that the Father's doing with the Holy Spirit, that you do things and move, and in Him you live and move and have your being, and you did it, that may, that inspiration may not just be your own intelligence? Are you prepared to live your life beyond your end of your nose? Are you victims of your circumstances, or are your circumstances victims of you? One thing I learned if all my life is a problem, then in him, I have a chance to defeat the all problem business. That's not my subject. All these blessings shall come upon you and do what? Oh, do what? Um, Pastor John and Murph, I want you to come do a skit. It does involve running. Now, you, I want, Pastor John, I want you over here, and I want you over there facing, now, don't, don't go away, just stay right there facing that way, you face that. He's learning to be a doer of the word, but he's not used to being blessed. He's the blessing coming. He's not sure he wants him coming. Now, he's been asking God for a blessing. But now it's going to come. He's not sure he wants it. Because he's not sure he's worthy to receive it. Even though he's learning to be a doer of the word, 
And the blessings are going to come upon him and do what? So here's what I want you to do. I want you guys, I want you to run fast. I want you to jog around this whole building. Okay. And, and I want you to be saying, I'm the blessing overtaking you. I'm the blessing. And I want you to say, no, go away. No, go away. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Don't, don't overtake him. Go. Go get him. Blessing. Yeah, go. He's gone. You're going, you're running too fast, man. Slow down. You, you overtake him. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. No, no. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. I, I'm not sure what happened. I'm on, let's go. I like that part in the back. Why don't you save it for the front? And, and, and don't run so hard because, you know, I know it's cardiovascular work. So just, I said jog. I didn't say do a sprint. I thought I was supposed to get away from him. <laughs> well, that's true. All right. Well, are you up to it? One more time. Go get him, Blessing. My head start. Blessing, you're slow. Well done. <laughs> Continuing education. Yes, absolutely. You need to see the skit again. Jim Faulkner. Scott Harper. Pastor Scott. Front and center, please. <laughs> no, it's the other way around. You're going to be resisting the blessing. He's going to be blessing. Go. The blessing shall come upon you. What is the condition for the blessing coming upon you and overtaking you? To what? Franz from the Netherlands. Come forward, sir. <laughs> he's a good, he's a, he's a jolly good fellow. Let me see who I can get to uh, pursue you. Um... No, no, it's going to have to be, let me see, I'm going to, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a, Jeff, come forward, sir. Meet Franz in the Netherlands. Now, Jess, a marathon runner? Now, we're going to, Deuteronomy 28 says this. There's second part, and I'll go to Isaiah. And it shall come to pass, is, and it shall come to pass, is that prophetic? Everybody is into the prophetic today. Everywhere's your turn, somebody's got a word for you. Well, how would you like to have the prophetic in Scripture? not just from a, hu a roving human. You think a scripture is better than a roving human sometimes? 
And I said, sometimes. Okay. So when it says in Deuteronomy 28, and it shall come to pass, is that prophetic? Oh, it's a prophetic as it comes. There is no greater prophetic statement in Scripture than in it shall come to pass. And since God's not a man that he should lie, it's going to come to pass. So the skit on blessings will come to pass. It will. The other part will come to pass too. Now, you're going to be the villain. You're going to be the devil. And you're going to be the Christian that doesn't want to be a doer of the word. And he's, he's going to be, he's going to be, it's going to be a problem to you because you guys are going to be running, going to be walking. And he's going to keep you from your blessings. And at one point, before you get to those chairs, he's going to take you down to the floor. Before you get very far. And then what I want you to do is cry out to God for deliverance. Say, God, deliver me from this horrible creature that won't, that's bringing the curse on me. Because what it says in Deuteronomy, and it shall come to pass. Is that prophetic? Yeah, it's as prophetic as it comes. That if you hear God's word, but you won't do it, then all these curses should come upon you, and you're going to be the curse. No, you're not the curse. It's a skit. Don't take it so personal. Okay. And I want, you to, I want you to cry out to God right here. Get this off my back, Lord. I'm tired of this curse. And while you have him down, I'm going to send a prophet to you with the word of God. And so who's going to be the prophet? John Lapp, come be a prophet. Come on, you can do this. Welcome John Lapp from Pennsylvania, our Amish brother. You're going to be the prophet. And I'm going to tell you what to say. When he, the curse, has him down right here, and he's crying out for help, I want you to walk over to him while he has him down. Now, don't hurt each other. It's not a wrestling competition. And I want you to say, I have a secret for you. How to defeat this curse. Be a doer of the word. And then you're going to say, I'm going to be a doer of the word in Jesus' name. And you're going to pop right off his back. Then I want you to do it six times around the circle. Up, down, up, down. Six times. One there, two, three, four, five, and one more time here. So you're going to have six places to stop. You're going to take it out. One right here, one over there, three four, five, and the last one here again. And you're going to be the prophet. And are you going to tell him when he's down? Sir, I have a secret for you. Be a doer of the word. And then the blessings will come. Quick. Okay. Okay, Jeff. Start your you know, walk. Now, don't fight each other. Don't fight each other. Now, no, yield. You're not... Don't fight each other. Just go down. He's. <laughs> At least go down once to the six times. <laughs> One time around. And that, whoa. Now, there here comes the prophet to talk to the man that's down by the curse. Oh, there goes the curse off his back. Now, now, wait a minute. Go, Jeff's gonna Jeff's free right now, but it, it's not gonna all be over yet because that curse no, curse is used to using him. He's too easy. Oh, there comes the curse again. Come on, prophet. <laughs> oh, good job, Jeff. Oh, there comes that curse again. Man, is this ever gonna end? Where are the blessings? Man, this is too hard. I, I don't want to be an overcomer. I just want to be dead for the curse. Wow. See how easy that? There he goes again. There he goes, faithful Christian. 
Here comes faithful Christian that curses back on the move. Ah. <laughs> One more time right here. One more time right here. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, no, not again. Didn't they do a good job? You say, can't it be that easy? I've been struggling for years trying to be free. Maybe you've learned a secret. Maybe you've learned a secret. And it shall come to pass that if you'll be a doer of the word, all these blessings shall what? Come upon you and... But if you hear God's word and you won't be a doer of God's word, then all these curses, that word curse means vilification of your blessing. The word curse means a villain vilifies your benefits or blessings. And if you want the villain to come to your life, don't be a doer of the word. Because when you're not a doer of the word, you're a doer of the villain's word. And he has the right to bless you. Could we take a lesson from a simple scripture and a, a simple skit today? Is it possible we could learn? Say this is continuing education. 